Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make a toothbrush rug. That's the type of rug that is right here. It's made out of recycled bed sheets. So the first thing you need to do is get a bed sheet and rip it into three inch wide strips. And then at the end of each strip, you fold down the end about an inch and you put a little snip so that you have that little hole at the end of each strip. At that point, I put it into a ball so that I'm ready to work and everything is all set. To start your first row, I step on the end of the fabric and I make a tension. And then I start a series of half hitch knots. I'm coming from behind, bringing it forward, but you could go from forward to behind. It doesn't matter as long as your stitches are even. And they're the same type, same direction each time. It's very similar if you knit to casting on your first knitting row. Now the reason you want to keep this tension is if it's too loose or too tight, you could stretch this out and make it flat. You want to give yourself a little looseness in the first row because you'll be coming into those same holes on the next row up. Most rugs are 12 inches. To start with, I usually do 16 on mine because I like a longer rug. But a 12 inch start will give you a 2 by 3 inch, uh, 2 by 3 foot rug when you're done. Okay, we're ready to go to the next row. That's what we have so far. Now we have to add our needle. Our needle was a toothbrush. That's why it's called that. I broke off the brush part, sanded it down to a point, and I made the hole in the toothbrush a little bit bigger. To thread a toothbrush, you just simply put your fabric through the hole and pull it all the way through. Once the fabric is through, you put your needle up through that hole, pull it back and over the needle, and you're ready to go. It's the same thickness as the needle, so you won't be fighting it as you're working. Let's get back to where we were. Here we are. That's what we left with. So we're going to use this as our runner for the next row and flip it down. And now the first hole is right here. I'm going to put my needle in it and I'm going to make a half hitch knot. The same knot that we made to begin with. This is the same knot the whole rug is made out of. And you fuss and fume till it feels flat. And our next hole is right here. So I put my needle in, make my loop, and bring my needle through that loop. And pull it tight. This is a little long. Don't worry. We'll fix that on the second row around. This is the runner, the thing that had the tension on it before. Where's the next hole? Right there. Continuing on down. And as you can see, I'm running out of fabric. It's getting harder and harder to fit my needle and my loop through. So I think I better add some more. To take it off the needle, Just pull the fabric through, and it's off the needle. To add the next length, get your ball of fabric, and you pull your next length off. You have this, and you take the end from the next row, which has the hole in it, grab the other one, and bring it up through that hole, and pull through. I try to clamp my finger right here and make everything nice and flat at this point because it makes a neater knot. When I pull my finger out, it's going to go into a little V and that's where you help it roll. And that gives you a knot that is equal thickness on both sides and strong. So now we re-thread our needle
pull the fabric through the hole, put your tip of your needle in the slot, pull it back and over. And now you're ready to work again. Where's the next hole? Right there it is. When you add a new strip, you got a lot of pulling to do, but that quickly gets used up and you're in business again. There's the next hole. Now, when you come to the knot, I pull from underneath to work my knot in through so I don't stress the knot too much. Now, remember that loop I was hanging on to? Right there it is. I'm going to put my needle right through that. And I'm ready to turn the bend. Here we go. My next hole is right there. Like I said, these will be pretty long, but you'll catch up to them later on as you go on. When you're increasing, and you will have to add stitches on a rug, because as you go around curves, you're going to need to add stitches. When you, you know when to add a stitch, because as you develop your rhythm and your tension, you will notice that all your stitches are a certain length. Mine are like that. When you come to these big long ones, that's when you know next time round you better add a stitch. You only add stitches on the curves, never along the flat of a rug. Because if you would add them on the flat of the rug, it'll cause a ruffle that you'll trip on every time you go to walk on that rug. Almost down to the next curve. And where's the hole? Right here's the hole. But, I've got this big long stitch. I've got to add a stitch in here. Remember the runner from the previous row? Right there is the hole for that runner. I can't put it in the same hole as I was because through years of rubbing, that hole would get bigger and bigger. I don't want to put it in the previous row so I slip it between the runner and the previous row. I'll show you another one here in a minute because that one wasn't a real easy one to see. Okay. I added an extra stitch there. Here's my hole for the next one. I'm going to do that. But I still need to add another one. So where's my runner? If I pull apart these stitches, uh, but of course it's going to be belligerent. There it is. Right here is the runner from the previous row. It's not the hole I just put it in. It's not the previous row. It's in between. So I could put my needle in there. It'll be tight, especially in the beginning. It won't be so tight later on, but in the beginning it is tight. And I just added an extra stitch so these aren't so long. And we, where's my next hole? Right there. And I think I'm going to add another stitch. There again, I pull apart these two, and there's where that runner is. I'm going to put it right in there and add one more stitch to this. You won't add as many stitches as the rug gets bigger. Just in the beginning, you need to add, but never in the same hole. And as you can see, I've made all these stitches sort of short around that corner. I'll have to do the same for the next as I go down and around. I keep tugging and twisting because it's important that you try to keep this as straight as possible. Once you get a little bit bigger, you're going to be working on a table. Because I'll explain why you want to do that in a minute. Okay, now we're coming down to where the stitches are getting long again on the curve. First, a regular stitch. Now I gotta look for the runner. So I pull that back a little, and right there was the runner from the previous row. My needle should be able to find its way down. 
If not, help it out. Right there it is. So I'm not in the same hole and I'm not in the previous row. I've created a row by putting it between the runner and the previous row. And I've just added an extra stitch. Okay, now I'm going to explain why we need to be working on a table. I have another rug started. As you're working on the table, it's easy to keep your hand on your runner so that's nice and tight. And as you put it down through, oh, there's my hole. Right there's my hole. You work off the edge of the table. And that way, your stitches all come out evenly. The reason you want to work on a flat surface as this gets bigger is if it starts coming up into a bowl, you're not adding enough stitches on your curves. If it gets roughly, that means you're adding too many stitches. So you work on a flat surface. After you complete a round, you should look to make sure that it's laying flat. Mine always twists in the beginning. Once it goes, a couple more rows, that'll be flat as a pancake. But that's the only thing that should be roughly. It shouldn't ruffle or gap. But as I say, your first rug will probably not look so nice because you won't be consistent in your tension. Once you develop your tension, your rugs will go. Your second rug is going to be beautiful. And that's really all you need to know about making a toothbrush rug. The last 20 to 30 years, they go through the washer and the dryer. And they're somewhat reversible, so you could flip it over and get two usages out of it before you have to wash it. And that's it. Thank you for watching.